Kazuma ni pants or steer is a little bit. It's also one of the funny ones. Hey guys, and I'm here with another Konosuba Fantastic Days video. Okay, guys, uh, disclaimer, this is gonna be another long one, right? So bear with me here. As usual, I've added timestamps. You can skip around and then choose uh, what you want. I think to skip all the way, you can go straight to the team setup, team building part, okay? So head over there and I'll see you guys later. Okay, so guys, event guide, right? <laughs> but since it's only left like what? a day i decided to take this uh more general approach so this is gonna be more like a general event guide or even a general boss guide i believe you can apply this to the arena as well because they are both kind of the same you know pve uh with different mechanics okay actually you know what we can even call this part three of the team building series because this is really most of it okay just just it if you haven't watched the other two team building guide i highly recommend that you start from there probably it's in the cards or something like that because i think those are also quite a lot to take in while you guys are at it please hit the sub button and like button and let's move on with the first part of the video okay so which stage to run okay so as usual for most gacha game it's gonna be the highest stage that you can clear i kind of recorded the first round of the event but uh it's definitely not like super accurate because the medals don't vary here and there um, not gonna share this because it looks really ugly and messy. I'm gonna go back to the game here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the boss. Okay, and then just... I don't know, it, it looks better here, right? Okay, so event or arena boss, there's generally two things to note. Uh, actually three, okay? Just like your characters have these attributes, okay? And of course, what are they? Number one, what element is it? Okay, number two, is it physical or magical? And number three, do they do status ailments? Uh, I'm only gonna touch this also in a little bit today because the video is gonna be really long, I think. So as you can see, current boss, uh, even though it doesn't tell you, I think. I don't I don't see it thing anywhere. But it's actually a win physical boss. Let's just remember that for now. And then let's go to the team. PLDW, you know, too long, didn't watch. Basically bring as many fire units as possible. Okay, so this is the team that I bring to the event and also the current arena as well because, you know, both are weak to fire, right? So really nice week, to be honest, like the event and the arena boss both are weak to fire. It's good to get us started, you know, like we just started the game and we can't really build so many things around. As I mentioned, the boss is wind element and it will deal 25 less damage just because your characters are fire based. Of course, the best part is you also deal extra 1.5 damage, right, to the boss, which is definitely going to hurt a lot more than the non-elemental advantage ones, right? And even if you do not have full fire, right? Like example here, uh, Iris here, please do not, <laughs> please try to avoid bringing uh, like water characters for this fight, yeah? Just cause, you know, like you can even bring wind, dark, light, just don't bring water, okay? That's just like the basics. Next, the types of characters to bring. As you know, they are like DPS, support, healer, tank, etc. So like I repeated a number of times by now, the two main criteria in any stage. You gotta finish off all the enemies before the timer runs out. And of course, your team has to survive until you clear the boss or all the enemies. Just so you know, even if Megumin, right, she, she's alone and then she casts Explosion Painted, but still managed to kill the boss, it still counts as a win. I don't know what kind of situation would that be, but you know, it's still a win. So ask yourself, can the 3 DPS that you bring actually out DPS the boss without any external factors like heals, buff, and debuff, etc.? If the answer is no, and I do believe that that's likely the case for most of us as well, then you got to start planning a little bit more like who else should I bring basically to last longer in the battle, you know, especially like the higher stages, EX2. I'm talking about EX2, guys. But even if you are struggling in EX1, then you have to think like, you know, is there something wrong with my team, etc. Okay, for this part, it's definitely not fixed. You know, there's, because there's like so many characters, so many possibilities, uh, different kind of skills. And if you play other games uh, with mechanics such as this, you know, buff, debuff, kind of like referencing Summoner's War. I don't know how many of you actually played that because that's the first gacha I played with such mechanics. Low rarity units are actually good in the game as well. So now I want to talk about buff and debuff, okay? These two very important things in this game as well. Okay, buffs are basically things that make your character or team stronger, like, okay, let me just switch here. Let's use Melissa for example, okay? This is gonna be a buff. Okay, physical buff. Iris also have a physical buff. Megumin also have a magical buff. This is self buff. And Sicily, even though this is a heal, okay? This is also considered a minor boost to 
physical de uh, defense. So this is great. Like I always say, like skill that actually do more than one thing are usually good units, okay, that you want to keep a lookout for. Okay, so like some are uh, self buff, like Melissa one, and then some like team buff. Okay, this is good one, but it's minor boost to all allies. You know, this one is like to all allies as well, also minor boost to physical defense. So I mean, best case scenario, you, you want to have like team buff all the way, right? Everybody buff. Because most of the time you have like three units in front. Okay, this one looks nicer. And then next, we can also take a look at debuff as well. Cause I don't know, it might be overlooked many times. Uh, like buff, debuffs are basically things that does the opposite. It weakens the enemies. Like you can reduce the attack, the speed, defense, etc. Okay, so like Melissa out is so valued is because of this significant reduction to their physical defense. Uh, but to be honest, in my team's case. It doesn't do that much except for herself okay and then uh debuff is also like things like this poison status ailment i'm gonna consider them as debuff as well and actually status ailments they can also be considered another category on its own but i'm just gonna categorize them under debuff so to keep it simple so you can actually start looking through your list you know like oh okay uh see which characters are viable and i will start Obviously from fire-based characters as they give the most of it. And since everybody has this fire Sicily, or whenever they give out a event unit, that's free. And then you can fully skill them up. Most of the time you can actually consider that as well. Then you can start to mix and match to include things that will help you do those two important things. Number one, kill faster. Number two, survive longer. Okay, you need these two. So your team basically need to take enough hits, you know, before your next heal comes. So in my case, I have actually like these two healers, right? This is actually a lot to take in. So I'm going to use my team here to give you an example. Okay, by the way, I actually attempted EX2 yesterday after recording that the... What video was it? Uh? After that ReZero video. And uh, surprisingly, I managed to complete it on manual. Okay, it's not auto. But I don't think I would do that again. I'm just going to let it run on auto. For EX1. I'm gonna say that I'm contented with running auto on EX1, right? Even way before that, I actually can complete EX1 auto because of this team setup. Okay, so let's just ignore the equipment for now. As I believe you can even clear this without the equipment for EX1 auto. You know, just because of the fire advantage and the team setup. Healers, buffer, debuffer, etc. Okay, so now let me explain my team setup. Who does what in my team, right? And of course, everyone has different characters, but Try to use what I'm trying to explain here, you know, to form your team in the future, like tomorrow onwards with the new event boss, um, we are predicting, we are predicting it's going to be weak to water. So people are preparing like water weapons and also fire earrings. Okay, but you know, we, we only know that when the boss comes out. Okay? okay, so that's the highest probability that we think the next boss might be. All right, okay, first up, fire silo. Let me just switch over here. Okay, like I mentioned many times, don't ignore the... Low rarity one, she's actually 2 star. So I'm actually really good when the condition meets. In this case for Fire Silo, she's good mainly because she's fighting a wind boss. By the way, I just saw on Reddit a mad lad actually complete EX1 using full 1 star units. Yeah, like all 1 star, okay? Uh, I don't think it's auto, but you know, it's quite impressive that people actually did that. So for Silo, first up, I consider her as my main healer as she has 2 heals, uh, though one of it is her out. Okay, this one here, okay, which give a physical and magical attack boost. Then uh, this is a bonus. Her heal actually clears poison. And on top of her two heals, both her attacks, even the normal one, right, is fire based. So straight away 1.5 percent, uh, 1.5 times damage. Okay, so 1.5 times damage. I'm gonna go through this quickly so you have a rough idea, right? So her main job is to keep the party alive, and then this is seriously a bonus. This actually makes the four star version of her S tier, right? Because she gives such a nice boost uh, on top of healing the party. Okay, next is Fire Melissa. Besides being fire, she actually has something that helps the team, you know, survive boss hit, which is this skill right here. I think the blue color one. You can see here moderate reduction of enemy physical attack. Okay, don't worry, the three star version also has the same thing. Okay, as you can see here. So if you have the three star Fire Melissa, she's gonna be great. The dark one actually has this, right? Minor chance to inflict haste. So you can consider that as well. And then the difference between the swimsuit Melissa and the three star one okay, is this skill here, which is actually a self boost, right? Fire damage to all enemies, moderate boost to your physical attack. Compared to the three star one, she actually has a poison instead. Okay, so both also has their own uh, extra damage, you know, to give up. Of course, next I have Megumin, which is just a suicide burst. But I also explain a little bit here. Her kit actually makes her who she is. In okay, number one, she has a self magic buff. 
And then number two, there's an enemy magic defense reduction, so it's also a debuff. This definitely help both her and Silo to deal more damage because of this magic, okay? And then it's fire. So overall, Kit is, you know, really good. And her finale actually deals quite a lot of damage to the boss, right? Uh, you can also hope that it crits. And then voila! Finally, after Mingumin exits the scene, we have Cecily, which I would consider a support slash off heal, as she only have one heal here. Thankfully, it also has a minor physical defense boost, right? It's a defense buff to all allies. Okay, on top of that, she can help to DPS with the poison, okay? Fire damage with poison. And then even her normal attack also have fire damage as well. And then I'm going to talk about hers. Ulti. Her ulti actually contributes to help DPS the boss even better because of significant reduction to their magic defense. It is great for magic team. Sadly, I can't pair her with Megu Min because I need Melissa's enemy physical attack reduction. Yeah, I mean for EX1, it's fine. We can just run whatever. You can still uh, take hits and survive anyways. I haven't felt EX1 with like this for actually like whenever they fade. And then the last one I'm going to mention now, Iris. At least she's more of an emergency character. So frankly, it doesn't matter who I put here because most of the time, four of them would actually just complete the stages, EX1. So like I mentioned, uh, I can clear this mainly on EX1 auto. It's not perfect, but I'm personally quite happy with just clearing EX1 on auto. I mean, it's really no sweat, right? I actually even prepared like uh, their skill sheet here, but I'm just gonna skip ahead and go straight to equipment. Okay, after finishing working on your team's level, that's like the number one thing you should do if you are struggling, okay? I just have this pet peeve of not wanting to max them for some reason, but I will do so really soon, okay? I'm out of like XP potion. Okay, you can start farming for equipment. Probably not for this event as it probably ended or left only one day when you're watching this. Okay, if you're watching this, I'm saying to farm for the current event. So if you're watching this, if the boss is fire, you, know, you can start preparing for uh, fire earrings and water weapons. Okay, so whichever that they are weak against and what they do, you know, you just have to protect against that. And I personally feel that it's okay to craft the silver earrings, like this one, wind earring, okay? As it gives a decent physical boost, it is a minor wind resist as well. Uh, just don't upgrade them, okay? Uh, unless it's like gold. Okay, the gold one gives extra times two, right? And then it's definitely worth to keep it in the future. Okay, so like, it's gonna take a while to craft this, as these gold earrings require 20 recipe, whereas the silver ones only take like five. So I think it's uh, okay to craft like two to three silver earrings and then hopefully try and you know craft one of the gold earrings to the weakest member okay the rest you can just slot with uh silver ones they are much faster to farm for as compared to the gold ones of course you know in time to come you know like months later if we can actually craft the four star ones which are the rainbow ones which is you know the best of course but for starter first week first month or whatever beginning stage just you can just do this, it's fine. Okay, then slowly upgrade it, okay? And then since the event is ending, the next boss, which we think, predict, or assume is weak to water, so it's gonna be the same thing as like now, but just a different element. Just gonna do this really quickly. So example, it's gonna be water, and then, you know, so we can just do this. Just don't bring wing characters for the next event if it's really like, you know, fire-based, okay? Okay, so what I'm saying, anything that buff physical and or, you know, fire element, plus also, you know, uh, wind and physical defense is going to be great for this event. The next event, we have to see what boss is it. Um, I think I covered most of, you know, the important stuff. Then uh, I know people are asking this, so I'm going to do a quick one. Okay, event, go to the exchange, <laughs> my 699 medals, nice. Okay, I made a spreadsheet for this right here. Okay, so basically the top ones are the things that you really want to get. Okay, then the rest of the stuff is honestly whatever that you need. Okay, skill pot, very high, right? Skill pot, it costs 150. You don't get this. Of course, you need 12 of these to max your character or, you know, four dupes to actually max your character skills. And of course, the higher the skill, the more they do. The more attack they do, the more heal that they do, things like that, etc. And then same goes with mini skill pot. You never know when you need it for your 3-star characters. Definitely only use this for your 3-star characters. I think it's a waste to put it on your 2-star, but you know, whatever goes. And then uh, of course, the Ares medal and the Axis medals, these are top priority, okay? Like 
please try to farm the event for this. And then uh, the silly skill pots, in my opinion, please, if you can as well, maybe after this, right? Like every event, they're gonna give, give you, you know, gonna farm. Like to me, you if you are able to farm, you know, using stamina for this, like a max skilled three star character, it actually performs better than a raw four star unit. I would say so. But of course the four star one, if it's maxed out, you know, max skilled, it's definitely a lot better than a three star one. But you know, if at base versus this Cecily, I would say she performed better than you know the four star variant because there's a lot of factors. So let's not go into that. Next one is the four star scrolls. Okay, there's a four star scroll here. If you have characters that use spear, go ahead. It's, uh, worth it. It's only 50. Right, it's uh it's only five. Then uh the anti haste this is definitely worth because in the future bosses do you know status ailments, that's why they have this amulet. And this is the 4 star one, it's only 50. Moving on, the 4 star all are gonna be precious. Uh, it's gonna be hard, but okay, I'm just gonna go through from here. Okay, skill pots, done. Uh, I have, I probably have enough for all the necessary things now. And uh, these things, okay, by the way, if you see this, this is actually uh, related to the things on top. So the worm horn is actually to craft the tornado spear. And the Archangel wing is to craft this anti-haste platinum amulet. I think they also fixed like, the smith like people complaining they cannot craft i think they kind of fix that now and then this uh all so basically all the rainbow stuff you know uh, probably worth it as well okay then the rest of the things honestly if you need okay uh I mentioned here uh the stamp pots is actually basically free it's gonna pay for itself like it costs 10 but you you're gonna get get back your stamina and more materials on top of that because of the runs okay so this definitely is basically Okay, like I said, this is basically free. So the rest is up to you. I actually grabbed the four star shellies because it's so damn rare and it's such a pain to actually farm for that. Okay, let me just see what else I uh, farm. I also exchanged this very early in the game because I was like in desperate need of uh, Ares. But if you do not need them, please don't exchange. It's gonna cost you 50 medals for this. Yeah, so I think it's really like uh, what you need. Um, I will grab these. These are like super rare like to, cr to upgrade your equipment but you know priority goes to the medals the stamp pot which is the stake uh, I wouldn't grab these I don't know unless you really need to level your characters then like I said the shellies I got him uh, for the rest of the stuff in my opinion really just see what you need and then just grab them okay by the way another reminder you know it's still gonna happen the dailies be sure to clear them five times a day whichever highest that you can okay this one here you're gonna get like five extra medals it's not much but it adds up you know daily so bonus medals is bonus medals so for the next event be sure to do that you know every day as well and that's about it for today i don't think i have time to even do a sample run but uh i think i will just post it in the next video otherwise it'll be too long so if you guys are interested in the runs i'm gonna be recording right now but i'm gonna post it in another video uh, I'll probably do one auto run and then one manual run. Okay, I'll probably just do a auto EX1 run and then a manual EX2 run in that video. So stay tuned. And that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys uh, learned something from this team building guide. You know, it's like an event guide, but honestly, it's more like a team building video as well. So if you have not already, there's a bunch of you who have not subscribed. Please consider doing so. Like this video and comment right down below if you managed to complete EX2 or not. Okay. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.